Hello and welcome to Saving Lives in Slow Motion. Today, I'd like to talk about the placebo effect. Now, most of us know what this means. It's basically when there's actually no measurable therapy or a treatment is effectively a dummy treatment, but the person appears to feel or get better. And I have to say, it fascinates me. And I think particularly in general practice, there are phenomena that occur like the doctor is a drug or the drug doctor, where, for instance, uh, you may go on a home visit, not appear to do anything apart from sit, listen, talk, examine, but the patient appears to feel or get better. So what's going on there? Well, the first thing to say is that the placebo effect and placebo are different things. Placebo is the sham or dummy or in, you know inactive drug, if you like, or treatment that is being doled out. And the placebo effect is the effect that happens, you know, in response to the placebo. So, you know, for example, someone feeling better, even though they've not actually had an active substance. And what's interesting is, you know, people who swear by placebo will say, but, you know, it, it actually worked. And there are studies where people have taken a real treatment, you know, with a an active substance in it, you know, a drug, for example, they've taken something labelled placebo, and then another group have taken nothing. And the people taking the placebo had 50% less symptoms than the people that took nothing. So you'd think, well, hang on, the placebo's working, but there's definitely an element um, of mind over matter. And one of the arguments is that people's perception changes when they have a placebo. But it's not just about a drug um, or no drug and the effect that it has. There, there are sort of lots of other factors at play. For example, the rapport that the doctor and the patient or the nurse and the patient have. And many of you will kind of know that story of having the doctor that you prefer to see it's like oh you know I love Dr X because she's so kind and really gets me and always helps me and also something about how positive the doctor is about the likely effect of a treatment so going back to the story of the home visit where the doctor does nothing in inverted commas actually they're not doing nothing are they they are listening and they are having an exchange of words and there are other things going on like compassion or kindness and those things are difficult to measure. It's not exactly a placebo story that I'm going to just digress into but I remember years ago we went to see my cousin um, in Suffolk and we'd gone for afternoon tea uh, at this kind of stately home, I can't remember exactly where it was but um, We'd, and I'd ordered Darjeeling, which is my favourite tea, certainly to have as afternoon tea. And, you know, it's just very, the smell of it is just so evocative for me because it's a Bengali tea and it reminds me of my grandmother's home, all that sort of stuff. Anyway, they they turned up, um, the waiting staff turned up at the table and put down this big array of teapots. And I opened the first one and just took a sniff and went, oh, God, oh, smell that Darjeeling, amazing. And I sort of passed it along and my cousin opened it and went, what are you talking about? This is just hot water. And the point was, um, I had sort of been anticipating that smell for since we'd got in there. So when I took the top off, I genuinely thought I smelt Darjeeling and I couldn't believe it when he said it was just hot water. And I went, no, it's not. And of course it was, and and that's kind of how I suspect the placebo effect works. You're in an altered state. Your brain is almost primed in a way that wants to believe, uh, for want of better words. But placebos are actually really important. We use them in clinical trials all the time. So 
something called a double blind trial is where one group um, gets the real treatment that you're testing and the other group gets a placebo which has no effect but neither group know whether they're getting the treatment or the placebo and in research terms that's how we deem uh, treatment effective or ineffective but what I find miraculous is that there's clearly something going on because in studies time and time again people report feeling better and you know whether it's depression whether it's migraines whether it's knee pain I mean there are there are so many studies out there that kind of prove that placebo works but that then leads us into this area of medical ethics is it ethical to recommend placebo so it seems to affect perception if nothing else of things like pain and you know there's no way that placebo is going to grow a new piece of bone or something like that so my view is that it works best when it's used by accident and I don't think it's something that I would personally feel comfortable recommending now a lot of people kind of say look placebo is like the perfect drug it's got no side effects you know it doesn't cost anything especially if you're not giving the person anything but I wanted, I wanted to give you an example of the kind of instance I've seen it really work well. So many years ago, there was a chap in his 60s who had a knee and lower back problem. And when he was in his late 20s, early 30s, he'd been in hospital um, having had a motorbike accident. And I'd, I'd only met him several years after this, um, probably when he was in his 50s. And since I'd known him, he'd always had a limp. And one day, you know, he was, he was very down and said, look, you know, can anyone do anything about my back and my knee? And I looked back through his old notes and really he'd um, not had very much in the way of imaging done on these parts of the body there was something about a tibial fracture which was below the knee in his notes and then I couldn't really find much about his lower back so this was in the days when it was quite easy for a GP to arrange imaging and I managed to get an MRI scan of his knee and his lower back can't do that anymore um, sadly and I remember before he went for them, he said, oh, you know, I remember the, the orthopaedic doctor at the hospital said my knee and my back would never be normal. And when we got the scans back, lo and behold, his lower back and his knee appeared normal on MRI. Now, what was going on there? Well, what was going on there was that someone had suggested to him while he was in pain and recovering from a road traffic accident and he wasn't in a good place mentally that his back and his knee would never be normal pretty powerful words from someone who would then have been wearing a white coat and is a surgeon when I went through the results with him it was absolutely astonishing because the change in him was miraculous and one of the things I immediately noticed was how differently he walked because belief is really powerful and he had believed for the best part of I don't know 20 30 years that he had a back and a knee problem that were never going to get better because they would never be normal in inverted commas and once we had proof that there was actually nothing wrong with them, it was almost like he sort of fell out of this sick role that he'd been kind of, I don't know, wasn't forced into it and hadn't fallen into it, but he was just, he never got out of it because he had been told that his knee and his back would never be normal. Now, I think this is fascinating. It's not really placebo what we're talking about here, but there's definitely an effect and it's different from what's called the nocebo effect. That's where 
you deploy a placebo and it makes someone feel worse. This was more to do with suggestion. And I guess, you know, one proposition that I buy into is that um, placebo works in the same way. There's an element of your brain believing something, wanting to believe something, and then buying into it so much that it feels real, like myself and the smell of Darjeeling tea. But that story I've just told you about, let's call him Alan, um, and the knee in the back, where there was this dramatic effect, got me thinking about whether this happens day to day in both medical practice and in our everyday lives. And I think it does. So a really common one I hear week to week is when the pharmacist has run out of a particular tablet and they get an alternative in. And because it's a different colour, the patient often says that it just doesn't work as well. And I initially thought, could it be the excipients, you know, the thing that the tablet is bound in um, might be different to the other brand. But having checked things like that, often that's not the case. In fact, most of the time it's exactly the same drug, just packaged differently. And it doesn't seem to work as well. So that's one example. Another one I've seen is when you are seeing a patient somewhere that they're not used to. So uh, many years ago, a lot of my patients used to be quite fixated with my consulting room. It was almost like they, they wouldn't feel better unless uh, we had the consultation in my room. They were used to that being a space where, you know, healing goes on, I guess. It sounds a bit wacky, but, uh, you know, a handful of patients really bought into that. And every time I happened to be in a different room because there was something else going on in my room or it was, you know, being renovated, they would make a comment going, well, you know, just it's odd, it just doesn't feel the same, you know, it's, um, as being in your room. And that was a, a new one on me. But when I think of my own experience as a patient, you know, when I'm going to the dentist or when I'm going to a clinic appointment, I, I kind of get where they're coming from, I think. And that's about consistency. So I'm going to leave you with my favourite placebo story. And it's about surgery. So surgery is interesting because it's very real. You can't just pretend that uh, nothing's happened. You're actually cutting into skin. There is something being cut out or repaired. And it's definitely a step beyond taking a pill. And what is amazing is that in several studies, but particularly the one by American surgeon Bruce Mosley, uh, which took 180 patients with severe knee pain um, to the point where drugs had not been effective, as in pain-killing drugs. Half of them had a real, what's called an arthroscopy, where you um, actually make an incision on the skin and have a look into the knee with a camera and then repair the damaged cartilage and clean out fragments of bone. And the other half had a fake one, so they had the incision, but there was no arthroscopy and there was no repair done. And guess what? The fake surgery worked just as well as the real surgery. Now that is staggering to me because however powerful your brain is in terms of, I don't know, pain mechanisms and the like, that one seems very impressive to me. Bearing in mind this particular group, had analgesia that had not worked. So that kind of story really makes me wonder two things really. Firstly, just how powerful and amazing are our brains? I mean, really. And secondly, I'd love to know more about the science behind placebo because I don't think we really understand it. In any case, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope that was an interesting episode. A little bit different, but something that is very relevant. Do let me know about your placebo stories, if you've got any of them. Have you taken one drug thinking it might be another and it actually worked for whatever it was the other drug was meant to be treating? I've definitely had that before, um, where a lady was taking cetirizine instead of citalopram, but felt a lot less depressed. Find me on the usual socials, on Twitter, on Instagram, and on LinkedIn. Thank you for listening. And as always, if you've got any topics that you want me to cover, I'm always happy to hear about them. 
In the meantime, until we meet again, until next time, do stay well. Take care. Bye for now. <laughs>